What's up, everybody? Um, this is vlog number four, I think. So I'm gonna try to sprint through a topic um, that has a lot of information, but I basically, I created another window. It's a tribute to like one of my favorite artists. I think maybe the most influential artist of our time that nobody has fully given the respect that he deserves yet because he started in a totally different place. So I wanna like try to sprint through his whole timeline real quick and then show you the window I made. So Tom DeLonge, um, some people know him from Blink-182, Angels and Airwaves, Boxcar Racer, um, but there's like a whole other side to the work that he does now because he won UFO Researcher of the Year and formed a company called To The Stars that's like a multimedia project company. But I basically wanna walk to the timeline real quick to give my case for why he's like the best artist that maybe doesn't get the credit he deserves yet. And it's coming at a really interesting time because there's a new show coming out on the History Channel next Friday called Unidentified that basically is like the first time the US government has supported disclosure about unidentified aerial threats in a way that um, I think is gonna change the conversation forever. And it's his work that allowed for this to happen. So, okay, so 2005, Blink-182 is like one of the biggest deals around in terms of music and he totally um, abandoned ship, right? He quits, for, he quits that band and um, starts Angels and Airwaves like not too long after that. And it's intended to be a multi-dimensional art project. Um, he wants to put out films and books and all this stuff. And it takes a while to take shape fully um, and for people to understand like what he's going for. And I still think it's taking shape, but for the first time ever, it's becoming clear what he was trying to do back in 2005 was awesome. And now we're starting to benefit from the vision he had way back then. So he abandoned ship from Blink-182, starts Angels and Airwaves, which is a total departure from his sound. Um, he's doing like crazy, crazy um, choruses and long builds and like the whole vibe of the music is completely different from what you're used to him being like in Blink-182. It literally makes you feel like you're flying. I highly recommend if you never listened to it, um, listen to We Don't Need a Whisper, which is their first album from start to finish like when you're driving like on expressway or on like a summer day with the windows down it's it's wild one of my favorite albums of all time okay so long story short just to show you like why this guy is the man um he leaves blink 182 starts angels and airwaves um he starts a company called mod life which was like myspace but you could interact with the artists like video chat with them and it was way ahead of its time um he's doing all this simultaneously while also managing a really successful shoe company called Macbeth Footwear, which made like really cool sneakers for um, a ton of different musicians and athletes. Um, and Mod Life, to touch on that real quick, um, Angels and Airways wasn't like the only band that was using Mod Life. Nine Inch Nails, uh, The White Stripes, Kanye West, there was like Coheed and Cambria. There was like 50 different bands that were using this as like a system to interact with fans. Um, long story short, he ends up selling those um, and Mod Life and Macbeth don't exist anymore, but that was just to give you like an idea of like his entrepreneurial spirit, which I really appreciated. Um, and then like put the music aside for a second. Um, this is when it like really starts to get interesting and the conversation for him being the most interesting artist around right now starts to become noteworthy. Um, he does like a million things after Blink broke up in 2005, um, but they got back together in 2011 and put, put some music out, right? Blink-182 basically broke up again then shortly after that. Um, pressure from the other projects that I mentioned um, started to like weigh heavy on him and his bandmates didn't get it, I didn't get it, the fans didn't get it. It was actually kind of annoying to see the band break up twice, right? Because everyone was pumped that Blink got back together and then they broke up again and everyone was like, oh man, this is annoying. The worst part about it is the media was kind of like saying crazy things that made him look really, really ridiculous. Like for example, um, most of the headlines were like, Tom DeLonge quits Blink-182 again to become a UFO chaser. And like on the surface, that doesn't really do his work much justice. The media discrediting him as being this like kooky guy who's going to be a UFO chaser and quit one of the biggest bands around for the second time. People kind of jumped on that. I kind of did too, to be honest with you. I was annoyed that they broke up again and I didn't get it. And then all the meanwhile, he was like tweeting stuff like, this year I'm gonna put out 10 books, 10 novels with my new company to the stars. And there's gonna be motion pictures and there's gonna be animated films. 
and all this, you know, I'm working with the U.S. government, high-ranking officials, and it seemed like it. It seemed probable that he really did lose his mind. And, like, I definitely, as I'm a big fan. Obviously, I'm making this video, right? I'm about to show you a painting I made of the guy. So I will be the first one to admit I've gone back and forth, like, trying to figure out if he's crazy or crazy like a fox. And it sure seems like right now he, like, the whole time was crazy like a fox. It just took 10 years almost to show that he knew what he was doing, which is crazy, the amount of commitment to it. But I'm gonna get to that in a little bit. The timing of this video is specific to something that's coming up, right? There's something big happening that is basically why I did this painting now and I'm putting this video out. So just to give you an idea, like where things started to um, turn, right? So, oh man, this is, there's so much information to cover, but I'll add one more thing. He went on Joe Rogan's podcast to talk about his company to the stars and their Academy of Arts and Science, which is basically a hub where um, he's got all these different high-ranking officials that are from the U.S. government now working for him at his own company that's supposed to study different things about aerospace and consciousness and um, basically like a ton of fringe topics, but still people didn't believe it, right? It didn't make sense. So what really like changed was um, WikiLeaks leaked emails of him talking to John Podesta, which everyone remembered from the Hillary Clinton campaign. But he was actually, at the time of the very email exchanges, he was um, Obama's chief of staff. So he was talking to people as close as the White House, right? So all of a sudden, that added some credibility to him. Fast forward a little bit of time, he wins the UFO Researcher of the Year. His company starts to really take shape, but still people don't like totally believe what's going on because it seems so fantasy still. Like, how can this dude from a rock band be high up in the government now talking about UFOs when they've like, why him, right? And his reasoning, which actually kind of checks out to me, is pretty simple. He straight up says, I created a mechanism to be able to communicate these topics with a large audience in a digestible format. So that's what To The Stars is, really. There's an there's an entertainment division, so he does all these books, novels, now the music. Everything's going to support this idea of him being able to communicate information about UFOs, which is a topic he's always been passionate about. And it's coming together incredibly nicely right now. What seemed like kind of a train wreck and like a guy who was going off the rails I feel like everyone's going to revisit it like really, really soon um, if it hasn't already happened yet. Just because as of this coming Friday, the History Channel is airing Unidentified, which is his television show with ex-ranking, ex-military guys talking about the videos that the Department of Defense literally gave to his company to show the world because he convinced them his way of communicating this to everyone was the right way to go. And it's crazy. Like, that's never happened. Like, in in history that's never happened that collaboration with the government and like a private company to communicate this stuff so I feel like that's what makes him unique is he was able to become that person that was trusted enough to communicate this and it's like the coolest thing ever so not to like totally fanboy out but just to like recap his like life work which is why I find him so inspiring he's put out 20 albums he's had three wildly successful bands with Angels and Airwaves, Boxcar Racer, Blink-182 He's already put out a full-length feature film called Love, which was awesome. There's another one in the works that's going to come out with the album that is already in the works coming later this year. He's got a documentary called Start the Machine that was pretty cool about the formation of Angels and Airwaves. There's an animated short called Poet Anderson that won Best Short at the Toronto Film Festival. Um, Mod Life was basically an operating system way ahead of its time that he sold to other artists. Um, Unidentified starts on May 31st on the History Channel, which is like no small thing. Um, and the topic that it's covering is incredible. Um, TBS bought uh, a series called Strange Times, which talks about fringe topics. Also another product that he put out through To The Stars. Angels and Airwaves is touring for the first time in seven years. They sold out that tour, like almost all the dates in the first 20 minutes. I feel like everything is coming full circle all at the same time. In Angels and Airwaves and To the Stars and all these different things is gonna propel him to be like one of the most remembered artists of all time. And I know that sounds crazy because you remember the guy from Blink 182 like running around naked in the music videos, but that dude has changed a lot and he's done way more than just those original records. 
Um, not to mention, he when he claimed that he was going to put out 10 novels, that sounded like a dude who was on Twitter, like, on a bender, just saying, like, crazy stuff, right? But he did. Like, you could go get those 10 books at Barnes & Noble's. They're real. They're all a separate brand, and they're all under the entertainment division of To The Stars. It's, it's insane. Um, so basically, everything he said he's going to do is happening it, some of it's happened way slower and i think like the fans grew impatient at times me being one of them but it's all happening and like i can't wait for next friday to watch this show because the idea that he's not just on the history channel but on it with ex-government folks who now work for him at a company he started is the weirdest he's got the weirdest life path i've ever seen but it's super inspiring i love the work that he's done and yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I think it's really cool. I, I hope more people get in, get on board with the story because um, he, his name was dragged through the mud pretty bad throughout all this, and it was hard to stay on board. But for those who that those who have stayed with him, it's a good time to be a fan for sure. Hope you like the window. I think it's a cool tribute piece. Thank you.